Hi, I'm Brock Archer with Advanced Extrication. This is our Extrication Minutes video every Tuesday on fire engineering. This week we're going to talk about slowing down for a more efficient rescue. So slowing down for a more efficient rescue. It sounds like a contradiction, but when we slow down, we typically will affect rescue more rapidly. And it happens in a few ways. We do it through evaluating our vehicle construction features. We do it through assessing our occupant's condition and location in the vehicle. And we do it through evaluating how the accident has affected the vehicle construction features. So I want to reflect on an incident that I responded to early on in my career. It was a head-on collision that resulted in the necessity for dash displacement. The dash was down on the occupant. And then the vehicle struck a tree side impact and pushed the B-pillar down onto the occupant as well. So it wasn't a real extensive extrication, but it took more time than I would like. It wasn't until the next day when visiting the impound yard and seeing the vehicle that we had cut up in the dark the night before when the light bulb really came on for me. It only took me a few seconds of evaluating that vehicle to see how we could have done a better job with our extrication assignment the night before. If I'd have taken that few seconds and utilized that time before I took action on that vehicle, that outcome for that patient may have been different. So I would encourage you to take time to look over your extrication incident, to really take a look at the vehicle construction features, how the accident has affected those features, the position of the occupant and the condition of the occupant before taking action on the vehicle. Anyone who has gone back and looked at a vehicle after completing an extrication assignment knows exactly what I'm talking about. It's only from that position that we really see what we really should have done with that incident. We want to take that time before we take action on the vehicle. So let's start with what slows us down. Why do we get to the vehicle accident and we take action so quickly before really evaluating, before really coming up with a solid plan, a plan A and a plan B? Well, we do it for multiple reasons. One of the reasons is the occupant's trap. And of course, it's our nature to want to remove that occupant from the vehicle. Another reason is that if you don't grab that tool and take action on that vehicle, somebody else is going to. And so how do we mitigate this? Well, as a company officer, as a captain or a battalion chief responding to these incidents, it's your responsibility to make sure that your crews slow down and become more efficient with their rescue assignments. As a rescuer, as a firefighter responding to these incidents, it's your responsibility to make sure that you slow down and really evaluate what needs to be done before, again, taking action. One common mistake that's made over and over again at extrication assignments where there's extensive work to be done is that we approach the vehicle and we immediately remove the roof which can take a matter of minutes in a good environment. During that time, while we're removing the roof, what we're really doing is oftentimes we're just killing time. We say we're trying to make room to access the occupant, and that may be the case. But could we access the occupant oftentimes from the clean side of the vehicle? Would our extrication be more effective from the clean side of the vehicle? Have we truly evaluated the strut tower and the lower A pillar of the vehicle to determine whether or not the vehicle is a good candidate for pushing the dash with the ram or lifting or jacking it with the spreaders. Has the dash reinforcement bar broken away from the A pillar, leaving the dash reinforcement bar free from the A pillar? 
All of these things we need to evaluate before we take action on the vehicle. We also find ourselves removing the windshield of the vehicle, simply killing time. Most evolutions that we need to perform on our extrication assignments don't require the removal of the windshield, including dash displacement. So we want to slow down. We want to take the time to evaluate that vehicle completely before we take action on it. Now, it may sound like something that you learned in the basic fire academy or something that you tell the new guys that are riding backwards on the engine. But it's something that I think all of us can benefit from remembering at all of our extrication assignments. So not only do we do that 360 safety and scene size up, but we want to sit down for a second and really look at how that occupant is trapped in that vehicle. The various vehicle construction features that are going to be getting in our way of removing that occupant, how we're going to overcome them. And once all of that is complete, take action on the vehicle. You wouldn't run into a burning building without doing a complete size up of that building before entering. Don't make that mistake with your vehicle extrication assignments. On your next vehicle extrication assignment, I challenge you to stop and take the time to evaluate all of these things before taking action on the vehicle. Thanks for watching this Extrication Minutes video. Again, every Tuesday on Fire Engineering, for more training information, visit our website, advancedextrication.com. Take care, be safe.